Hi everybody, welcome to Introduction to Sociology. I'm Dr. Williams, better known as Dr. Sue, and I have a lot of help producing this course, so I want to acknowledge some of the people that help me, uh, David Westfall, Kirsten Beats, and Dusty Garner, and you'll be meeting some of these guys from time to time. But I wanted to let you know that we're here for, for your benefit. I believe in a student-centered learning environment. I don't know if this is your first or your 100th online course, but what I do want you to know is that we're accessible to you and that we're here to try to optimize the learning experience for, for you. What we learn is that we also learn something from you, right? So this is a two-way street and we want you to stay in close communication with us. I happen to believe, I'm a very visual person, so I don't know if you are too, but that's my world and that's my life. So we devote quite a bit of time to getting these kinds of uh, overviews and lectures and so forth on video for you. We hope it works well for you. If something is not working, we'd like for you to let us know about it. One of the things that may happen is you could have some technical difficulties. What happens then? Well, as the website explains to you, the first thing you do is pick up the telephone and call ITAC. That is our IT help desk. They can walk you through it. They can work miracles just over the telephone. So we hope this is working well for you. We hope that the learning style works well for you. We would like to hear from you uh, if you have questions or concerns about that. I've been at K-State for 12, I think going on 13 years now, but I've taught for many more years than that, and I love what I do. I sort of expect other people around me to love what I do, or what we do together, because I think that the excitement and the energy that one brings to the course makes a lot of difference. So I think that you too may be excited to enter our world of sociology. I know we're excited to take you there. I happen to be filming this in my office. This is my office, my bookshelves. Uh, I have thousands of books, I guess, by now. But I also have personal things around me uh, that are very meaningful. This is sort of my home. I don't know if it's even my home away from home. I think it's just my home because I'm here a lot but I get to get up every morning and do the kinds of things that I love to do. So hold on because we're in for a ride. What you see here on the spokes is, is some kinds of the topics that we cover in sociology. You know, the nice thing about sociology is the world is our canvas, as they might say. We study any and everything. There is nothing that can't be studied sociologically. Some call it sort of the 30,000 feet view. I don't know that that's a, an apt metaphor for that. But, but in some ways, we do study um, the big picture, right? I think maybe the better analogy is the forest and trees. Uh, we're more the forest kind of perspective, though we also recognize that the trees are infinitely important. So in other words, we study people, interactions, among people, but also interactions between people and institutions in society, sort of getting the larger picture of how our society is put together. So we have a lot of different topics to bring you, only some of which is suggested here. Uh, be sure that you keep that syllabus in front of you. Maybe it, you will just keep it in front of you electronically, but also you might want to have a printout copy. I don't know, that depends on your learning style. But check the syllabus regularly. It really is the document that's going to get you through this and keep you on track. We will have different kinds of reminders posted from time to time, but your best bet is the syllabus and the course outline, which will give you all of the information that you need to get through the course successfully. There's a few things that we define as our course objectives. One is to distinguish what we call the sociological imagination. The sociological imagination takes you places, uh, many of which you've been before, but you didn't really see them with your sociological eyes. So one of the things that the sociological imagination does is enable you to distinguish between personal troubles and public issues. There's a lot of different ways to think about this, and 
One that I use quite often, I don't know if it's the best example or not, it might be a little bit depressing, but it's the idea of divorce. Who of us is not touched in some way by divorce? It's painful not only for the people who are most intimately involved in a relationship that's dissolving, but but children and relatives and neighbors and friends and uh, parents and cousins and whatever it might be, the, the bankers, the people at work, everyone is affected by divorce, not just the people who are in it. So while it is a deeply personal issue, it also connects with other people. In addition, though, when we live in a culture in which one out of every two marriages end in divorce, then that's a public issue. And we can't understand people's personal troubles without also understanding the culture through which these kinds of issues are shaped, formed, and in some ways socially constructed. We also talk quite a bit about diversity in social interaction. Uh, I teach another course about diversity, and it's one of uh, my heart kinds, heartfelt kinds of topics. I believe that we are enriched through diversity. Then we also look at how social position, that is, myself as a teacher, uh, you as a student, our, my role as a mother, our daughter, our friend, or colleague, or uh, neighbor are affected by our, uh, our life outcomes are affected by these positions. We also have positions like social status, our class. Are you middle class? Are you sure? How do you define that? How do you know? And how does that determine the ways that you can sort of maneuver through life? And then the fourth question, the fourth uh, objective that I will mention is to question and critique. We want you to be able to understand, to analyze, to under, to figure out the world around you like a big giant puzzle because knowledge is power and the more you know about your own life the more empowering that can be for you. I, I hope you take that one thing away that you can absolutely become a little closer to understanding the power of knowledge and how just knowing those social forces that help guide your life can give you more power over them. If we're not aware of them, how can, how can we begin to understand? If we can't understand, how can we begin to control our own lives? So I hope you enjoy that part of it. I, every course I teach is based on a thousand points. That's because it's easy for me to move the decimal place. Uh, I like to go ahead and, and uh, load up the points right up front so you know where you can earn points. I like for the assignments to already be weighted so you know exactly how much weight uh, is placed on that particular assignment. And at the end of the semester, we add them up. It's really, really simple. It's a cumulative point system. Every point that you earn is already weighted and equal to every other point available so that you know where you stand at any given point in time. So, for example, if you want an A in the course, then it takes 900 points. 900 points equals an A because here at K-State, we don't use pluses and minuses and those nuances in between. Then anything between 800 and 899 points is a B. If you want a C in the course, then 700 points is all you get or all you need. Now, I wouldn't put that too close, right? Don't cut it too close. Uh, because you want to make sure that you make it to that next level of whatever it might be. You also will know that, uh, again, every assignment is weighted, and generally speaking, I don't offer extra credit assignments. I don't offer extra assignments. So you need to, to take note of what you want, your goal in this course, and know how many points you need to achieve that goal. So here we have it. We have reality checks. Not only do we have uh, book learning, so to speak, but, but I like, I'm a real firm believer in getting out there and being able to apply the knowledge that we offer 
uh, in real life events. So we have reality checks that I think get you a little closer to that, a couple of little papers do there. We have a reality check that it's experiential, in other words you get out and, and actually experience life, experience sociology. Uh, that's a big one. That basically is your semester project. And then we have other kinds of what we call active learning all along the way. You know, this course qualifies for one of the university's general education re uh, requirements. So you get credit for that, but we that means we have to meet certain criteria and certain qualifications in, the, in order for to establish this as a general education course. So one of the things is active learning, another is critical thinking, we talked about that, another is experiential learning, giving you feedback on all of these things. So active learning is achieved in a couple of different ways, through message boards in the class that you will post to weekly, and also through some other kinds of partic participation points, um, maybe discussing with other people, that sort of thing. We'll let you know as we go along with those. There are weekly quizzes. Uh, you will be responsible for 10 of them. We will offer something like 11 or 12. I think it might be 11, and then you can drop your lowest score so that uh, if you totally bomb on one or miss one, then you have that one to spare. And those are open book, open note, I actually encourage you to collaborate, to use cooperative learning, to study with one another on that. The quizzes then are made, are structured so that you can have your book open, but it encourages you to read and know the material before we're actually going over it in class. So it's a great device, keeps us honest, keeps us looking ahead and understanding the material, hopefully. Then I have, this is the first time I've done this, but I'm sort of excited about it. You actually only have one so-called exam. It's an online timed exam so that uh, you, you get on, you have a certain length of time to, uh, to take the, the exam, and then it, uh, if you have 60 minutes, for example, it closes after 60 minutes. So this is a little different from the quizzes. With the quizzes, you can get on there, you can open them, you can close them, you can point, print them out, you can look up the answers, you can work with other people, and there's no amount of time limit, nor there's no limit to the number of times you can open it. Now, you can only submit the quizzes once, be sure that you know that. Uh, but it's a, a fairly informal, but I think effective way to learn the material. An exam is something else. An exam tests your knowledge. So with that one, you won't have a lot of time to do that maneuvering around. You have to know your stuff, get on there, take the exam in a certain length of time uh, bef before your time runs out. Okay. Uh, but we just have the one, and it's about three-fourths of the way through the semester so that it covers the material pretty much that's in the textbook and the lectures. The reality check that I mentioned earlier, the experiential learning, is actually a part of, if you want to say, you know, your total, your comprehensive evaluation in the course. Because some people learn from exams, some people learn by doing. I've put a lot of weight on the doing in this course. So uh, that one comes at the end of the semester and you will be evaluated then about what you have learned, how well you have learned, and how you can articulate what you've learned through a sociological lens in a paper at that point. So you have a thousand points potentially available. Uh, be sure that you're keeping up with those assignments and know, okay, I have an assignment due, there's points I can get here and there. I will say that I'm always surprised every semester that people don't always take advantage of the easy points. The quizzes, fairly easy points. The uh, message boards, extremely easy points. So don't miss those. Every point counts, remember, so make sure that you're keeping up with, with that. So then we have the sort of details about some of the, the assignments. The reality checks, the critical thinking reality checks, are called me, 
and crayons. And we will post instructions, guidelines for those. They are each worth 100 points, and I want you to do both of them. Again, however, if you bomb on one or whatever happens, you totally space out and miss it for whatever reason, then we will double up the points on the other uh, assignment for you. So that gives you a little bit of a safety net there as well. The experiential learning is a project that we call streets. It is required. There's no backup on that one. Uh, but it is a lot of fun. I think you're really, really going to enjoy it. It's big. It's 250 points, one-fourth of your semester grade. So that's how seriously I take it, which means that that will help you take it seriously as well. So there are weekly readings we, that's listed on your syllabus, and they are opened in different modules. I'll explain that in just a minute. There are weekly quizzes that match the readings for the most part. Uh, and then there are message boards for participation. All of those take place every week. The 3 4 exam I've already mentioned to you, it will be time for 60 minutes, probably 50 to 60 questions uh, online. Okay. Let's see, then finally, think about the modules. We have modules or sections that we arrange the assignments in so that each module covers, in this case, two weeks for the online course. This is an eight-week summer course. So we break that up into four different sections for you. It just helps you keep organized and keep on track, which I find uh, works much better for student online students. You need some flexibility within, but you also need some structure to keep you on target. So you would look within these to, to find your assignments and readings and so forth. By the way, your textbook you should be able to get through either Claflin or Varney's here in Manhattan. Call them up. Either one of them can ship the book to you. There's also an online version of the book uh, that you pay with an access card and they would be able to help you for that if you prefer the electronic book or the ebook. Okay, so I want to talk to you just a little bit now about K-State Online because that will be your life as you are going through this course and this this may be old hat to you but I wanted to show you just a few things to show you uh, how to get in and around the course and also how we organize the course so this is my view which is a little bit different from your view but um, pretty much we can get right over here to the home page to see what you see so here you have announcements you have uh, talking about the K-State, the uh, iTech help desk. If you have technical difficulties, I will post regular announcements here for things that you might need to know. Uh, there's our little video here that uh, we think sort of gets you into sociology a little bit, what sociology is about, and some of the things that, the way, the weird ways that we think. Uh, then over here, you have different kinds of links that help you get around. So if you check here on files and content, for example, you can find the syllabus. And all you have to do is click on the syllabus, bring it up, you can look at it, you can print it out, you can, whatever it is you need to do with it. Uh, to check that, but I would have that in front of me if I were you all the time. Um, so here's some of the things that we've already talked about. Um, there's the information on the textbooks. There's the objectives. Uh, this happens to be my little grandson, so I thought that was pretty cute. This picture I took as uh, we were out in the quadrangle of K-State one day, and it was just like people were just walking by and not even paying attention, yet here is Big Bird just strolling along with the other students. So that was really interesting to me because I've developed this, this sociological lens that I look through, and I guess what that told me is we can get used to anything, right? Um, so other kinds of uh, information here about the general education requirements, about the different kinds of assignments that we structure into it, and then here is the, the point system that we just talked about. Here is a, a 
more in-depth explanation of the graded assignments. Please look at this. I want you to type in the K-State Honor Code on every written assignment, not message boards, but every written assignment that you turn in, and the honor code is this. On my honor, I have neither given nor received an authorized aid on this assignment. Type that in at the, the beginning of your paper and just type your name under it, okay? Every written assignment. Also note that I talked to you here about rubrics. I have a grading rubric or a list of criteria that I used to grade every major assignment. If you'll look at those rubrics and I make them all available to you, it is, it is a gift, let me tell you, because I tell you exactly what I'm looking for and the criteria that I use to grade your assignment. So isn't that a good thing to know, right? So you can go right down that column and see what I expect to see on your assignment. I promise you that will optimize your grades. So I have uh, other kinds of explanations here about the message boards, about the weekly quizzes, about various kinds of class policies. Um, some of this is a little bit about some of the on-campus classes, but, but we also have rules uh, for class conduct online as well, and especially for what we call netiquette. How do you write and how do you have uh, an interesting yet respectful conversation online? So that's a good one to look at. And how do you construct an effective and appropriate email message. Well, I have some here, some guidelines here for you. Trust me, this is a skill that we no longer take for granted because of what I learn is that students have not been taught for the most part about how to write an appropriate email and how to use appropriate netiquette online. Then you have the course outline. Again, keep this in front of you because it is your guide. This is your to-do list and your due dates. Generally speaking, I have uh, assignments due every Sunday night at midnight or at 11.59 p.m. And then on Monday, we start again with a new week. So I find that students do well when you know what to expect and when, when things are due. So I try to keep that pretty consistent, Sundays at midnight. And there will always be a link or it, or we will give you instructions about how to upload. But it's almost always just a link for that assignment and you scroll, you find your assignment, you upload it, you submit it. Now, caution, please hear this. You must submit your documents in either Word or RTF format. Either one of those will do. RTF is just rich text format. It's sort of a universal, generic kind of format. Or Word will do. Not WordPad, not word perfect, but Word as in Microsoft Word. Okay. Uh, so then you have the major assignments listed on here, what's due when, what you're supposed to read. This ER means electronic readings, so when you see that, that means to look under the module I'm going to show you modules here in a minute, and look for an electronic reading because you're going to be responsible for that. I think we only have one, no, we have two examples, but I want to tell you this. So here you have chapters one, two, three, four, right? Well, that's in your regular textbook, whether it's your ebook or your regular textbook. Uh, and here we have chapter nine. But see this where it says 11 and then an E in parenthesis? That E in parenthesis means electronic chapter. Okay, so that's different from an electronic reading, which is something I just find and post up for you. When it says a chapter and then that E in parenthesis, that means you need to go to the Hensland website, the Pearson website, site, which is listed on your K-State Online Access website. You'll have an access code that you get when you buy your textbook. So you have to go on there and you have to search and find, and you'll have two different um, symbols up there. 
One will be for my social lab, which is just some exercises and stuff. The other one, it has a picture of the purple textbook. You need to click on that purple textbook and look for the 11 electronic chapter because that's going to be different. In this case, 11 was the gender chapter, I believe. So that's the only way you're going to be able to get to those. Okay. Um, then, okay, so you can see that, the rest of the kinds of information that you need there. Okay, so let's go back. If you remember now, we were at the home page, and then we clicked on files and content. Okay. And we just got through looking at the syllabus. Now you have module one. So anything that's available to you uh, within that time period will be under module one. So you'll check on there. You see here are some lectures. And there are lectures for week one and week two. And you just click on these. They're MP4 files. You need a pretty fast connection to be able to see them without the jumpy start and stop uh, hesitation step, so to speak. And, and there's quite a few of them. Uh, these are a combination of lectures and in-class activities that we filmed on uh, while we were teaching, while I was teaching uh, inside the, the classroom, the brick and mortar classroom, so to speak. Um, so also in the module you have a folder PowerPoints. So within the power within this folder we give you the actual PowerPoints that we're using in the lectures and exercises and that sort of thing. So sometimes when you want to review it's easier to just review the PowerPoints rather than the whole video. And that's the reason we've made those available to you. Okay, so what else do we have? Here is where you would look for electronic readings, and here's the electronic reading that's due for Module 1, and it's called Nasarima. When you check on that, then you have the reading. This is a really classic one, uh, and so you would read that. Though you'll have some questions to answer, and we'll talk about that uh, in some of the discussion or maybe on the message board, so you'd want to get that reading behind you. Okay, so what else was I going to say about this? Um, when there's an assignment due, you would check here on assignments and grades. Waiting for it to open. So any assignment that's available for you will say available right over here under status. See that? So you also see that there are some future ones that are not open for you yet. And then you would be able to click on whatever is available right now. The pretest is available. That's taking a little quiz kind of thing online. Okay. There's message board. Again, there'll be a message board every week. So you click on that and participate in the message board. So I think we're getting close to this. You can email me from here if you want. Um, I'm talking about doing Twitter. So I think that's about it. Um, if you have questions or concerns, please be sure and email us. We'll try to get right back to you. Be as specific as you can. Be sure and put a subject in the subject line. And be sure and sign your emails. You'd be surprised how many people don't do that. And then we don't know who we're talking to, right? So I hope you enjoy this. And we're really looking forward to hearing from you and getting to know you a bit, too. Okay? Have a great summer. And I hope that we've afforded you the flexibility yet the right balance between structure and also the balance between fun and learning because we think it's a lot of fun. So we can't wait to, to see you too. Bye-bye.